Hey everyone, welcome to another video. I hope you're having a great uh, day and week, and I hope your reading is going well. Uh, in today's video, we are going to be chatting about uh, the first volume of Stephen Kotkin's Stalin. This is, as I said, the first volume. It is subtitled Paradoxes of Power and covers 1878 to 1928. The second volume I've actually got just behind me here, it's subtitled Waiting for Hitler, covering 1929 to 1941. And the final volume, which is yet to be released, is subtitled Mao Eclipse, and will cover 1942 until the end of Stalin's life. So I've read a lot of biographies over time. Uh, you can see some behind me here in my bookshelf tour, um, if you want to go and watch that. I do have a lot more which are sitting up at the top shelf over there. Um, so I have read a lot of biographies over the years and this is a very, very unique one. Um, Kotkin takes an approach to writing biography which I haven't seen really before. He, and he writes about this in the introduction where this is less of a history of the man um, than a history of the world in which the man lives and the world that the man creates, if that makes sense. Um, and you, you see this quite distinctly in the fact that you spend a lot of time looking at the Russian Empire, how it works politically, um, how it works in terms of uh, social control, economically how it works, um, where it sits on the world stage, both uh, geographically and uh, in, in terms of a political sense. And then you see what Stalin's place is in that world and the experiences that he has. And those experiences go on to shape how he rules when he eventually does come to power. Um, this sounds, it's a subtle thing, but this is far less of, like we're not focusing on how Stalin goes through life uh, with this purpose, this, this drive for power. I suppose that is also a, an opinion that Kotkin has. But he doesn't have this drive for power, he's living within this world which is giving him these experiences and it moulds him in a way that when the October Revolution happens and he is within the Bolshevik party and then Lenin dies, he has the, the, the thought patterns and the tendencies that mean he will go on and set up the Soviet Union in the way that it is set up, such that he is in ultimate control. You're going to have to read the book to really fully understand that line of argument, or I would have to do a much longer video going through how Kotkin makes the argument. But that is what we're doing here. Uh, if, I, if I compare that to something like Churchill by Andrew Roberts and that is much more about Churchill himself and the way in which he exerts pressure on the world around him at every stage and part of that is these two men are very different Stalin and Churchill are very very different people Stalin is born in a poor mining or not mining town sorry he's born in a poor town in Russia close to uh, what's now Tbilisi, what was then Tiflis. Um, he's born to a, a, an artisan, effectively, and lives his life basically dirt poor. He doesn't have a job, he's a professional revolutionary. Churchill is an aristocrat, effectively. So they're very different people, but the approach to writing about them, you could write about Churchill in the way that Kotkin has written about uh, Stalin here. That is, uh, it's something you can do. Um, 
So it, it, it's, it's a fascinating way. You spend a lot of time looking at the history of those last four decades of Cyrus rule, at how Peter Donovo were uh, like sort of changes things politically, Stolypin, obviously Rasputin, um, how the war happens, and then how Stalin moves through these things when he gets sent to exile, when he's in Baku, uh, various things. Um, it's very, very dense. It's very, very closely written to the evidence. Um, there are nearly 200 pages worth of notes and references here in the um, back of the book. So you can spend a lot, a lot of time really looking at this stuff. Um, and it is supposed to be one of these works that's going to stand up for a long time um, as something you can go and reference to hear about Stalin. Now, some of the interesting things uh, that he writes, uh, in particular about Lenin's Testament, he, he comes back to it quite a bit through the last half of the book, um, where he raises some interesting lack of evidence, I suppose, for Lenin having written the Testament, um, which I certainly haven't seen presented before. He te seems to contend that um, Lenin's wife slash, slash girlfriend Nadia uh, actually wrote, the, uh, Nadia Kupskaya, um, actually wrote the testament as a way of forcing Stalin out, um, which while there's no evidence for it, there's also no evidence for Lenin having written it, and Kotkin shows some interesting circumstantial evidence the dates things happen, etc., for uh, Kripskaya having written the testament. So it's it's very very interesting. Um, if you are looking for a biography of Stalin and you're willing to, I mean, go through three volumes of seven hundred plus pages, absolutely pick it up. Um, it's also got very very good reference material. There's not a lot missed out, so you're not. You're not going to come to try to reference this book and not find stuff. Um, but if you can, find the uh, hardcover copies or a, a different edition and there's Penguin like Classics edition, then definitely go for that. This is very, very ugly. Um, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed the book. It was a bit of a slog, but well worth the read if you are into Stalin. Uh, it's, I'm currently actually reading, I'm about halfway through Ian Kershaw's Hitler. I have read this before, uh, but I'm going through it again because actually I'm realising I didn't actually learn anything the first time I read it. Uh, it's much more readable than Stalin is. Uh, and it is pro probably because I'm reading the single volume on Hitler. Uh, that is abridged and a lot of that scholarly stuff is taken out, which is all present here. Um, so maybe one day Kotkin will abridge this just like Kershaw's done and that will be a lot more readable. Uh, but yeah, there are single volume histories, Robert Service uh, wrote a biography on Stalin and also on Lenin and Trotsky. So if you're interested, um, there are those ones out there, but this is probably going to be one of the authoritative accounts for quite some time. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there. I think I've been rambling for a little bit. Hope you're having a good day um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.